So let me just recap so far what we've done. We have a generic Chinese 32 servo motor controller right here. And so far I have one servo plugged in. This is a servo. And it turns that top helicopter part left and right. And what's going to happen is I'm going to have a LiPo battery, which is like the same kind of battery used for a power drill. That's going to plug into one of these blue ones. And then I'm going to have a ground, and that actually comes from the battery too. That's going to plug into the little ground one. You screw it into these little screw port things. Like you shove it in, you shove it in this hole, and then to keep it in, you screw down the top with a little screw. Um, there, you can see the Phillips screw hole. That's how you secure it inside these little ports. So that's the power and ground, which come from the battery. The battery has two cables, one's black, one's red. The red one's power, black one's ground. So I'm going to be connecting those into here. And then into this one, I'm going to connect the USB. You can see it's an RS32 USB port, just like a lot of phones have. RS232 or whatever. That's going to plug from here to the USB port on my laptop. So the laptop will tell this board move servo 1 to 60 degree position. And then this board will say OK and it will do it. And my laptop can even tell this board how quickly to do it. Like move it there at this speed and then the servo or the board will tell the servo to do that. So he forwards the message. Now, in this case, my laptop is providing power via the USB port to this board to control the logical circuits of the board, the microcontroller on the board. Um, now, this board can be controlled in different ways, but that's how I'm going to be doing it. You can also have an Arduino connect to one of the pins on this board called the TX pin and Arduino can send signals telling this board what to do and so any microcontroller will work but I'm going to use a full-on computer because the brains of my robot needs to be bigger than anything Arduino or Raspberry Pi can achieve so I need a full-blown actual computer computer and that's what's going to connect by USB to each one of these boards because it's powered USB, it's going to provide enough voltage to run the circuitry or the logic circuits of the board. Now, this controller has one of 32 total servo slots filled right now. Okay, so I just also you have to put the servo into the servo one slot, and you have to put it with. The green side is the outermost, and then the yellow side is the innermost. Yellow is signal, positive is the middle, negative is the outer. Or it's signal, power, ground. With signal being the inside, power being the center, ground being the, the outer. So you have to get that right. And every servo will have different color cords. In this case, that's the color cords for this servo. Okay. So the next thing we had to do is I got my main computer here and my mouse and keyboard in front of me. And my main computer, my personal desktop computer, is not what's going to be powering the robot. My robot's going to be powered by a laptop, which will be mounted in the chest of the robot. So I got the laptop over there, and I'm able to access the laptop using Wi-Fi from my main computer using TeamViewer. TeamViewer is a remote desktoping software. So I was able to pull up my laptop screen 
in Team Viewer here. This is my laptop screen, and I was able to install USC underscore driver dot exe, which is the driver that's that it tells you to download that comes with this particular 32 servo motor controller board. That driver enables your computer to communicate with this board or something along those lines. So we have successfully downloaded the driver software for this board on the computer. Now we have to open up the computer's device manager, which we did. You will see the hardware device of the servo controller. What will, what will it look like? It will say com something Toro bot. I don't see it. I have to open some of these up, I guess. I'm really not seeing it, guys. Makes me think I didn't install the the software correctly. Let me try to install the driver again. I don't know if I actually installed it or not. It was all in Chinese. Wait a minute. What if you have to open it, run as admin? Run as administrator. Maybe that's what happened. I think I just did it. I opened up the the USC folder in my program files. And I, I clicked on double clicked on and set up. I'm sure it installed something correctly that time, but I might have to restart the computer. for it to like show up in device manager maybe wait maybe it's not showing up because I don't have the device plugged in Time to wake up. I don't even know what that's for. What the heck is going on?
I have a virus, guys. No! The joys of robotics. Beep, 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 beep. Oh! Self destruct in five, four, three, two, one. Come by port. Boom! We did it. So, okay, what I just learned here, and this is important, is you cannot install the driver without your your motor controller plugged in by USB. Otherwise, it won't work. So I had to uninstall it and reinstall it. Now it's working. Okay, let's uh, download the software now. Okay. That was fast. What the heck does this say? I just had to click X, sorry. I don't know what that says. I think it probably says there's a new version you can update to or something. I don't know, but whatever. Uh, I feel like I feel like the beeping's because I don't have battery or something. I didn't install the LiPo battery. <laughs> 